Next, we have uh, Professor Alfana uh, to talk to us about the study design considerations to quantify the clinical value of TDM. Hi, Jan Willem. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, uh, so uh, Jan Willem is the Chair of Clinical Pharmacy at the University of Sydney. His research interests include investigating the use of anti-tuberculosis drugs, as well as the clinical application of therapeutic drug monitoring. So if you're happy, Jan Willem, I'll pass to you. Share my screen. Everybody see my screen, correct? Yes, thank you. Great. Thank you for the kind introduction and the invitation to talk today about study design for therapeutic drug monitoring. Uh, so a little bit of an overview. Of course, we're going to talk about PK and PD. Uh, more important is what should you know before you start uh, designing a study. Uh, important parameters of the study, of course, are drug exposure and pathogen susceptibility. Um, and of course, uh, defining the endpoint for your trial. So we all know a uh, treatment of an infectious disease includes um, uh, different aspects. Uh, we're looking at clinical signs and symptoms of a patient. So we do imaging, do lab tests, uh, collect blood cultures or cultures from site of infection. And based on that, uh, we will decide which drug to select and how to administer either as uh, oral capsules or injection or infusion. Excuse and, me, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but just I think um, the audience might be having a little trouble hearing. So, uh, sorry, would we'll just be a moment. Can you hear me, Susie? Uh, I can hear you, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, David Grohlman, are you there? Can, are you able to hear? Yeah, I can hear perfectly well. Sorry, just had to unmute. <laughs> no, that's no problem. <laughs> okay, so we'll continue. Thank okay, you. great. Thank Thanks. You uh, so if you've done all our evaluation of clinical signs and symptoms and diagnostic testing and selection of the drug, we of course hope uh, that we will have a happy patient and a happy family at the end. Uh, but of course, we know that life is a little bit different. Uh, we have pharmacokinetic variability. Uh, pathogens may have different susceptibility uh, and of course the underlying condition may affect uh, outcome especially in for example immunocompromised patients and uh, so we have to deal with underdosing and uh, with a risk of emergence of resistance clinical failure perhaps mortality and of course when we look at overdosing and uh, we talk about toxicity that potentially result in a premature cessation of therapy and so when we talk about uh, therapeutic drug monitoring, it's not only measuring the concentration, as I mentioned in one of the earlier talks, but actually doing something uh, with that concentration in the interest of that uh, individual patient. And then, of course, uh, we need that evidence to support uh, therapeutic drug monitoring to convince everybody to actually use this uh, methodology to optimize uh, treatment in individual patients. Uh, so when we talk about evidence and uh, we talk about survival, clinical cure, and of course we talk about health and economic endpoints, uh, because if we can um, uh, earlier discharge patients, uh, that's not only pleasant for patient and family, but also for uh, hospital associated costs. So first, of course, we start with interpreting the, the PKPD of that particular drug. And of course, we have a range of in vitro and in vivo studies uh, showing uh, nice correlations between a uh, drug exposure, uh, antibacterial kill or antifungal kill, um, susceptibility and concentration. So you have these nice graphs and uh, many situations uh, for the drugs. Uh, we have uh, AUC over MRC, time above MRC or peak above MRC. And, uh, one clearly stands out from the crowd and there's also often the second one who is close correlation but not as good as the first one. Uh, but then it becomes more difficult because we have to look at what the location of this infection is. Uh, because in, in vitro systems uh, we, we deal with one compartment and a little bit more advanced systems. Uh, we talk about intracellular um, and models 
but in a patient, for example, uh, with a pulmonary infection, then uh, we talk about effect of antimicrobial concentrations in the epithelial lining fluid. And of course, we have to uh, translate plasma concentrations into epithelial lining fluid concentrations. Of course, for TDM, sampling of ELF is not the easiest way to do. Uh, in some situations, we, we may use uh, bronchial ovalier lavage uh, to get estimation of some sort of concentration at the site of infections, uh, but this is generally not, not available. Uh, so we need to take into account uh, what concentration can we expect of the, of the site of infection. And of course, we have seen today many, many trials on, on therapeutic drug monitoring, but if we just look at what's out there on PubMed and we search for TDM studies, uh, often these are uh, single center studies, that's easy.